Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. In the last video, I showed you about pre-roll, which is super awesome. Check out that video. But in this video, I want to show you kind of a way to take that one step further. And that is to use something, different systems call it different things, but it's called, what's it called in Studio One? Quick punch? No, auto punch. There's, there's different names for it. But this is a way to punch in a phrase. So the pre-roll is great if I'm playing a take and I mess up the chorus. I can just say, hey, stop, can you get me back in at the chorus? They go to the top of the chorus, hit record, it gives me two bars before, and then I can start playing and recording it. So, and then just continue the take. But let's say I've done a full take and I say, I just need to punch in the first four bars of the chorus, or I just have this one line that I need to punch in. You can punch in manually by hitting record when it's time to sing and then hitting record again when you're done. You can use pre-roll to start the recording, then you can hit record when you're done. Or you can use this. Let me show it to you real quick like. So for some reason, Studio One folks, they like to make it really tiny. But this was the button we used for pre-roll. Whoop, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Uh, which, is Z, which is the letter O. And then this is the other one. Uh, which is called, what, show me, auto punch, which is the letter I. They're next to each other on the keyboard. That's nice. So this, it still uses pre-roll. It'll still give me the two bars before. By the way, I totally forgot to mention this in the last video, but if you go to your metronome setup, this is where you can set how much the pre-roll is. It's two bars. And I have it set to, I don't have pre-roll on all the time. I just want it to pre-roll when I record, so I don't select this. But two bars, most songs, two bars is good. Occasionally, four bars is better. So let's say we want to record that same line that we were recording in the last video. It's the second line of the chorus. The world is not the way it's supposed to be. JoJo singing sharp. But let's say I just want to get this phrase right here. That's all I want to record, and then I want to stop recording here because the rest of it is just beautiful. Well, the way you do that is fairly simple. Use the loop points. Now, you can do this in Pro Tools. Any other DAW does this. It's just called different names. Um, you set up a loop point. So this is my loop section. Set it up to the exact spot where you want it to record. And then all I have to do is hit record. Hang on. Actually, I lied. It doesn't use pre-roll when you do this. You just start back here somewhere. Hit record. Oh, no. Hang on. Hang on. Auto punch is on now. I'm learning as we go. Okay. When auto punch is on, it's either pre-roll or auto punch. So since this is auto punch, I've set up the punch point. Now I just have to click back here. When I hit record, it will not record until I get to this section. Then it will stop recording when I leave that section. Let me show you what that's like. The world is not the way it's supposed to be. Change is coming. You see what happened there? Pretty nifty, right? It started me recording here. It stopped me recording there. It was automatic. I didn't have to do anything but sing. This is really, I don't use this a lot when I'm recording anybody else, but occasionally I'll use it for myself when I just need to punch in one section and I've got to walk over to the microphone and I just want it to do it for me automatically, like having a robot assistant. Super handy, um, especially when you're by yourself. Because when you're recording someone else, you can always punch them in and punch them out. Or you can give them the pre-roll, so it's automatically two bars every time, and then you can punch them out when they're done. But if you're by yourself and you got to have the guitar ready and playing, and then have it punch out so you don't have to do an edit later, this is the best way to do it. And again, the setting from the last video, uh, where you have that set to automatically record the five seconds before, it does that here as well. So I can still drag this back in case my edit points weren't perfect. Um, Obviously, where it stopped recording, though, it doesn't do that. So you need to make sure you give yourself plenty of room there. But the entry point is a little bit fluid. You can move it back and forth. All right, that's it. Super quick, super fun. I use that all the time when recording. Not as much as pre-roll, but I still use that one. It's a good tool to know. And take some time to figure out how your system does this, because it's going to be different on every one. But if you can become fast at that, you'll be a godsend to anybody that comes and records with you. So they're not waiting around for you to click for five minutes to get set up for the next take or to punch that one spot in. The, the more efficient and fast you can be, the more the musicians can stay in that creative zone and not get bogged down, which ends up being pretty important. If you're interested in learning more about recording and you haven't checked out my recording cheat sheet yet, you need to, recordingcheatsheet.com. There's 12 habits in there. If you just hone in on two or three of them, you'll have dramatically better recordings by the weekend. Go check it out, recordingcheatsheet.com. That's it for me. See ya.